Efforts to deal with contaminated water at the crippled Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant have hit another snag. The operator of the plant has discovered highly radioactive water could have leaked from a holding tank, but says none of it has gotten past surrounding barriers. <laughs> Sometimes just think funny things. <laughs> Tokyo Electric Power Company officials report that on Friday, inspectors discovered a pool of water at the base of the tank. It was approximately 20 centimeters squared. Beta ray emission from the surface of the water measured 70 millisieverts per hour. Company officials say workers place sandbags around the pool, and there's no sign that it's getting bigger. The water in the holding tanks has been treated to remove cesium, but remains highly radioactive. Officials believe the water in the pool came from one of the tanks. The tank with the suspected leak is an older model that has leaked before. Its steel plates are bolted together rather than welded. Tokyo Electric plans to remove the remaining water in the tank for further treatments. Officials at the operator of the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant say they're about to begin an important step in the cleanup process. Workers will start dismantling the cover of one of the reactor buildings this month to clear the way for the removal of dangerous spent fuel. The cover at the number one reactor building was installed after the 2011 accident to prevent radioactive dust from dispersing. Workers want to remove it so they can clean up radioactive debris inside the building. Then they'll be able to remove spent nuclear fuel that's still inside. Preparations to dismantle the cover began last October. Workers sprayed chemicals over the debris to see if it would keep the dust in place. They confirmed the chemicals worked. Officials at Tokyo Electric Power Company say dismantling of the cover will start on May 15th. They say it involves numerous steps and will take about a year. Officials at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant say the number of injuries among workers last year doubled, and they put it down to inexperience. The Tokyo Electric Power Company officials say 63 workers were injured over the course of the fiscal year. One worker died after falling from a storage tank. The officials attribute the rise in the number of injuries to an increase in inexperienced employees. They say more than 70 percent of those injured have less than a year of experience at the plant. The number of plant workers doubled from 2013 because of the increase in the construction of water storage tanks. Last year, as many as 7,000 people worked at the plant on any given day. TEPCO officials say they plan to step up training workers. Officials at Japan's Meteorological Agency have lifted a tsunami advisory to coastal areas of the Izu Islands and the Ogasawara Islands in the Pacific south of Tokyo. The agency issued the advisory about 90 minutes earlier after an earthquake with an estimated magnitude of 5.9 struck off Torishima in the Izu Island chain at 1.51 a.m. Sunday Japan time or 16.51 UTC Saturday. The agency says a 50-centimeter tsunami was observed at Yaene on Hachijo Island in the Izu chain at 2.35 a.m. It also reports that the 20-centimeter tsunami was seen as on Miyake Island at two places, Ako and Tsubota, at 2.48 a.m. and 2.53 a.m. respectively. The agency cancelled the advisory at 4.10 a.m. There have been no reports of damage or injuries. The Japanese government decided on a 40-year safety limit for nuclear reactors following the accident in 2011. But Kansai Electric Power Company wants to continue running two of its oldest reactors for an additional 20 years. After careful inspections were completed, officials decided to seek approval. The utility is the first to file an application with the Nuclear Regulation Authority for an operating extension. It covers the number one and number two reactors at the Takahama plant in Fukui Prefecture, central Japan. 
Power companies that want to extend the operating limit must carefully examine reactors and other equipment for possible deterioration. Kansai Electric officials say their inspections did not find any safety problems. For the extension to be granted, the reactors must pass a screening process based on the new requirements. The application must be approved by July 2016 before the Takahama reactors can go back online. Kansai Electric also plans to carry out a special inspection of the number three reactor at its Mihama plant, which started operating 38 years ago. Japanese lawmakers are urging Taiwanese authorities to rethink part of their strategy on food safety. They told President Ma Yingzhou they don't want to see more regulations on imports from Japan. Taiwanese officials say they'll increase their regulations in the middle of this month. They plan to demand certificates of origin for all Japanese imports. Taiwan already bans food from five of Japan's prefectures, including Fukushima. Officials imposed that rule after the nuclear accident in 2011. A group of Japanese lawmakers told President Ma Yingzhou the new regulations are not based on scientific evidence. We are urging Taiwanese authorities to address the issue quickly and properly. So the good relations we've built between Japan and Taiwan won't be hindered. Taiwanese authorities have not said whether they'll rethink their plan. Officials at the Japan Atomic Industrial Forum say global distribution of nuclear power plants fell in Western nations last year but rose in emerging economies. The industry body says five new nuclear reactors came online in China in 2014 and one in India. China has 26 reactors under construction and plans to build an additional 30. Eleven reactors are under construction in Russia and six in India. One reason emerging economies are opting for nuclear power is that it helps reduce greenhouse gas emissions. In contrast, no new reactor has been, become operational in the U.S. or any EU member country for seven consecutive years. The U.S. has closed five plants over the last two years, reducing its total number of reactors to 99. The closures come at a time when increased production of shale gas is pushing down electricity prices. This is making nuclear power generation unprofitable. Experts note anti-nuclear sentiment has contributed to the decline in the West, with Germany and Switzerland withdrawing from the nuclear industry. The total number of operable nuclear reactors worldwide was 431, over 31 countries and regions. Bob Alvarez, you've come out with a new report. What are your main findings? Well, uh, my report dealt with the vulnerabilities and hazards of stored spent fuel in, at uh, U.S. reactors in the United States. Uh, the United States uh, shares uh, similar designs, uh, reactor designs, as, uh, as the Japanese reactors at the Fukushima Daiichi Station. Uh, and if you watch the accident unfold at, at the Daiichi Station, uh, the explosions basically showed you that the spent fuel pools uh, were exposed to the open sky. Uh, we are, in the United States are currently storing on the order of three to four, five times more radioactivity in our pools than in uh, Japan, and that the amount of radioactivity that we are storing in unsafe, vulnerable pools constitutes the largest concentrations of radioactivity on the planet. Uh, in 2008, my colleagues and I uh, issued a, a report, an in-depth study, uh, following the 9-11 attacks. We became very concerned about the vulnerability of these pools after those attacks, and we pointed out that if somebody or something were to cause the pool water to drain, uh, it would lead to a catastrophic radiological fire that could render an area uninhabitable far greater than that created by Chernobyl. Chernobyl
Chernobyl created an area that's currently uh, uninhabitable uh, uh, that's approximately the size of half of the state of New Jersey. Uh, the fact of the matter is is that uh, we, we don't have a final resting place for these wastes. We've been trying to find a disposal site for these wastes for the last 55 years. And the reality is that these wastes are going to continue to accumulate at U.S. sites. And the reactor operators are going to continue to squeeze uh, uh, spent fuel into pools that have no nowhere near the level of protection of reactors. I mean, these pools are contained in structures that you would find at car dealerships or big box stores. And, um, for example, the Nuclear Regulatory Commission does not require the pools to have backup diesel generators if they lose off-site power. Uh, it's very important to keep the, the pools cool, uh, and uh, they, they do pose some very, very serious risks. They are, in my opinion, the most serious vulnerability of nuclear power that we have in the United States. And But what are the alternatives, uh, given the fact obviously that, that the United States government like uh, uh, several other governments around the world are determined to continue uh, to expand the use of nuclear power what are the alternatives for storing the spent fuel well I, I think that the there are different there's a big difference between plans and reality I think that the expansion of nuclear power in this country if it occurs at all is going to be rather modest and minor we have to be concerned about the 104 reactors that are operating uh, and the the generation of that material and that we should be doing what Germany did 25 years ago which is to thin out the pools use them for the original purpose they were intended which is to uh, allow the spent fuel to cool off for several years and then to place the the spent fuel into dry hardened storage modules uh, and uh, this significantly reduces the hazard uh, of these spent fuel pools. You say that what is recommended for expansion in the United States is relatively minor, Bob Alvarez. Um, but I think many were shocked that uh, President Obama has been pushing for something that presidents haven't pushed for for decades. I mean, the last nuclear power plant in this country built, what, some 30, 40 years ago. I mean, Juan, you've written about uh, President Obama before he was president getting a good deal of support from the nuclear industry. And he never said he wasn't going to push for this, but they've been rather quiet about it right now since the catastrophe in Japan? Well, I think a lot of this is rhetorical. Uh, I think that uh, I, I look at it as the equivalent of throwing nuclear candy at political supporters or, uh, or, or even political enemies who you're trying to win over. Uh, the fact of the matter is, is that nuclear power is not going to have a chance in this country at all unless it has unfettered access to the United States Treasury. Uh, this is not going to happen. Uh, the House, for example, recently enacted the appropriations legislation for fiscal year 2012 and totally spurned Obama's request to expand loan guarantee authority. In other words, the U.S. government would guarantee the loans, but the loans themselves would come out of the U.S. Treasury. Uh, I don't think that the Congress right now has the stomach to uh, open up the Treasury for reactors that are going to cost on the order of $10 billion apiece. You also have to keep in mind that while he has been vocally supportive of nuclear power and has done things like try to seek expanded loan guarantee authority. He's also pulled the rug out from under the nuclear industry by canceling the Yucca Mountain disposal site. Uh, and so um, I think that we have to sort out, uh, as we do with a lot of things the president does, uh, the, the difference between what he says and what happens. This is an NBC News special report. Well, I want to be very clear. We do not expect harmful levels of radiation to reach the West Coast, Hawaii, Alaska, or U.S. territories in the Pacific. That is the judgment of our Nuclear Regulatory Commission and many other experts. Furthermore, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention and public health experts do not recommend that people in the United States take precautionary measures beyond staying informed. 
And going forward, we will continue to keep the American people fully updated because I believe that you must know what I know as president.